All right, so we uh, need to knock out the next section of notes here. Uh, the little bit of a smorgasbord of things that we're going to get in this one. Um, we have outliers and influential points, understand the difference between those two. And uh, then we have some other things as far as standard deviation, R squared, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what an influential point is. An influential point changes the slope of the regression line. Okay, that's what we have to remember. Uh, an outlier is just a point that we've already talked about what an outlier is. It, and actually, I think we hit influential point too. But an outlier is just a point that doesn't fit the overall pattern. We talk about an influential point, an influential point changes the regression line. So uh, if we look at what we have here, we have this drawing. Um, there's what our, our green line is what we have with all 18 points. And so what they're doing here is we're identifying child number 18 and child number 19 as outliers. Okay, so 18 and 19 are both outliers. Okay. Uh, however, when we talk about whether they are influential or not, then we have to go look at the slope of the regression line, and that's what they did here. Okay. So what they did was they took child 18, and they took out child 18, and that created the blue line. Okay. So since my 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 slope I, I my slope changed by this much, that is going to work. Well, that will deem as a significant change. So therefore, child 18 we're going to consider to be influential. because my slope of my regression line changed, okay? Um, <clears throat> if we come down here to child 19, uh, child 19 was removed, that's gonna be in red, and we can see that the there was very little change to my thing. And again, we look at the location of where child 19 was to the location of child 18, okay? Child 19, is not an outlier, not influential. The slope remained the same. So what I have, uh, what happens here is, is this: if we, if you have ever been on a teeter totter before, okay, I, I don't know. I, I actually have no idea how many of you have actually been on a teeter totter. But when we ride this teeter totter, if we have all the weight to the outsides, that's when we can go up and down. Okay, so movement can happen. However, if I stood over the center of this teeter-totter, okay, very little happens. And that's the same way that happens with linear regression. You don't need to see a human there. Not that that was even a human to start with. But when I have points over the center of my teeter-totter, they're going to be, they're not going to have any impact. Okay, so if we look at child number 19 over here, 19 was roughly in the center of my data, so therefore it had little impact, okay? Nothing was really gonna happen with it. Whereas child 18 out here, 18 was on the edge of the teeter-totter, okay? And it made a lot of difference. So that's what we're gonna look for when we look at outliers is where it is located on the teeter-totter, so to speak, okay? Uh, moving on to standard deviation. <clears throat> really, the only thing that we're going to have to remember here is we, I mean, we're not going to do much at all with the equations. Um, I wouldn't worry about the equations um, as far as calculation wise. However, we can see we got the star out here, so the interpretation is critical. Okay, so the, we're going to go with the distance. The standard deviation in a linear regression model is going to be the distance a typical value is from the least squares regression line. Okay, how far off the predicted value it was. Okay, so remember when we talked about standard deviation of a one variable set of data, we talked about the average distance each piece is from the middle, okay? So this is gonna be the average distance each piece is from my line, least squares regression line, okay? So uh, again, it's similar, except it's no longer to the middle of my data, it is to the least squares regression line, okay? All right, uh, next to uh, this part of our little smorgasbord here, is the coefficient of determination, which is my R squared value. So that's what goes in the blank first. OK, 
Okay, and so uh, what that is, is there's a statement that we're going to have to remember here. It is the percent of variation in y that is explained by the least squares regression line of y on x. Okay, so just like we had to remember slope is your, for every increase in uh, x, my y variable is going to change by this. Uh, my slope inter is, you know, the y-intercept. This, this is a very mad libish chapter, uh, and we have to remember that. Okay, now this is a this is a wild. Not shouldn't say wild. Um, R squared is very. You're not going to have to explain where R squared came from. You're just going to have to kind of explain what R squared is. Uh, and usually we go off the statement. However, I did want to talk about R squared really fast and see if we can have some type of uh, of uh, understanding of what it is because we have a formula for R squared. Okay that has uh, this little number here, which is gonna be my total error. And uh, this number up here is gonna be my standard error. I guess we don't need those dashes probably. Um, whoops, I don't need my eraser anymore. Undo that. So I guess what I'd like to do is have an idea of what those numbers are, okay? So we're gonna go back to our fat content compared to our uh, calorie content. Now this is, again, I, I'm making this scatter plot up. I, I don't think it's even, this, it wasn't this strong. Uh, it was actually pretty weak, but there is my scatter plot, okay? Uh, now with my scatter plot, if I was asking you to guess how many, cal how many calories are in a candy bar, we aren't, uh, so fat is out of the picture, all right? There's no fat to this. We're not using fat at all. I'm just asking you to guess how many calories are in a candy bar. We're not using fat to predict anything, okay? So if we had to guess how many calories were in that candy bar, we would have to guess the mean. So we would have to guess Y bar, okay? The, y, the mean of all my calories. And so what that does is then we have, again, if we go back to residuals, um, we have this, in a, in a, in a, or we'll see if we can do it in colors. There's these residuals here. Okay, all of these residuals. So this is the total error. It is based completely upon um, a, a guess, and the guess is off my mean, okay? So the blue, that is going to be then the total error here, okay? So what we're going to do then is uh, we, will have, we would have a number for that. It would be some huge number. Um, let's say it, it's a 1,000, okay? So what's going to happen then is we're going to shift gears a little bit, and we are going to then write a linear, draw in a linear regression line. So we're going to draw in my linear regression line. And now I'm going to find those, find those residuals again. So we can see that my residuals now are much smaller. So I have a lot less error when I use, so we can see that my lines to my, from my pink line to my line of regression, I can see that the amount of error there is much, much smaller, okay? So that is the amount of error I'm currently left with, okay, which is gonna be in pink. So what happens with this formula is we're figuring out how much error is left, and then we're gonna subtract that from one and that will tell me how much error my model between fat and calories helped explain. Okay, so again, that's what we're, again, it's just trying to get a conceptual grasp of what we've done here. Because all I had to go off of earlier was just a guess. And now what I'm trying to use is I'm trying to use fat to help predict calories and help reduce the amount of error that was going to happen. Okay, so, and, and if we go back to my candy bar data, we're going to find out that R equaled 0.4978. And to get R squared, all we have to do is square that R value, and we're going to get 0.2478. So in reality, my fat did a very poor job of uh, helping uh, predict calories because only 24% of the error was reduced. Okay? So 24, and so we're going to go back to that equation. So... Uh, if we go back to code, is the percent variation in Y that is explained by the, that is what we're trying to use here. So 20%, 24% of the variability in my Y, in this case, my Y is calories. K 
can be explained by the least squares regression line between fat and calories, okay? So again, the, the, the model I drew was actually very good. Uh, as far as, you know, I had the blue as my original error, the pink was my new error, and so it explained away everything that uh, was, was left, okay? Uh, so 24% uh, is not a very good R-squared value or coefficient of determination, okay? I drew something that was much better. All right. So again, that was my attempt at getting at what R-squared is. It's the amount of that variation that we can explain away by using another variable to help predict, okay? All right, so we're gonna move on to ne the next page and uh, get some notes started on this. We'll get uh, down to computer output, okay? Uh, so we're gonna go to our formula sheet and uh, look what we have there. If I go out to my formula sheet, um, I'm gonna go, this is, this is what we're after right here. Slope is B, okay? There is no B1s or anything like that. So B is gonna be the standard deviation of Y or the standard deviation of X. So I had highlighted these formulas earlier. Uh, now we're gonna go talk about how to use them. So uh, in going back to my notes key, we know that the slope is gonna be B and we know it's gonna be R times the standard deviation of Y or the standard deviation of X, okay? So uh, that's one formula that we need to know. And so the goal of this is to be able to actually find my linear regression line from summary statistics, okay? So now that we know the slope, we have to find a way to find the y-intercept. And again, if we go back to the formula sheet, um, my y-intercept is going to be A. And so we're gonna use this formula then to figure out what A is, okay? And we can solve this for A by subtracting the BX over. So it's y-bar minus B times x-bar. Okay, so the formula that I'm going to, the formula that I'm going to use here in just a second uh, is not, is just this formula rearranged. So if we come back here, because I actually want a formula for my y-intercept A, and so that is going to be y-bar minus B times x-bar. Okay, so do note that it's a, a change of formula, okay, uh, but uh, that's what we have as far as uh, the two formulas that we're going to use. So... Here we go, we're gonna roll through example nine to do this. Uh, most states conduct regular safety checks given a bridge, a giving a bridge a structural safety score for various scales. The New York State Department of Transportation uses a scale that runs from one to seven. There are 194 bridges in Tompkins County. So uh, again, it's, it's one of those things of if we can identify variables as we go, it's just a good habit to get into. The, the N of being 194 is completely irrelevant in this question, but it's just, a, again, a habit we should get into. Um, the, the mean age of the bridges is 44.9, okay? Um, so, uh, we're going to let X bar then be 44.9, uh, with a standard deviation of 30.75. So my standard deviation of X is going to be 30.75. Uh, the mean safety score is 5.28 and it has a standard deviation of 1.097 a linear regression model is made for age versus safety score typically they were going to this is the same we're using the age to predict the safety score so that means that i, I assign my variables correctly uh, is formed with an r value of a negative 0.681 so again as the bridge gets older its safety score is going to decrease. So one variable is increasing one while the other one is decreasing. And they want us to find the regression line. Okay. So again, to find that regression line, I'm going to need a slope and I'm going to need a y-intercept. And again, that slope is found by taking my r value times the standard deviation of y over the standard deviation in x. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that means that when we do this, we have r is going to be a negative 0.681. We're going to take that times the ratio of y, which is 1.097, to the standard deviation in x, which is 30.75. Again, this is a very plug and chug section. We were given an equation. We were given, we were given an equation. We substituted into it, 
and then that means all we have to do is get generate an answer that's a negative 0 0.0228 okay so we have the slope for so for every additional year of age the safety score is going to decrease by a negative 0 0.0228 okay that's what we'd found um, now we need to know that y intercept And again, it is all formula driven. Y bar minus B times X bar. So if we plug that into what we know, I know that the, my typical safety score is 5.28, but we're going to subtract off negative 0 0.0228 times my X bar, which is 44.9. And so we end up with a, a Y intercept of 6.22. So now we have all the pieces parts to make my equation. If we go back again to your formula sheet, we could see that again, now we're going back into this one. So now we're doing that prediction equation. So we're gonna have a score hat is equal to my y-intercept of 6.22 um, minus, since it's a negative slope, 0 0.0228 times x, and x is going to be the age of my bridge. So again, um, there's two ways you can do this. And, and let's talk about those two ways real fast. I could come out here and I could say that X is equal to the age of the bridge and Y is equal to the score. Okay. And then I could write Y hat is equal to 6.22 minus 0.0228 times X. So if I define my variables, I can write my equation in terms of just X and Y. However, I discourage that. I'm more of a guy that uses the variable names as I write the equation, so um, that's the way I would rather see you do it. But there is other ways. So uh, now we're gonna predict the safety score for that 55-year-old bridge. So again, the score hat, the predicted score for that bridge is going to be 6.22 minus 0 0.0228 times the uh, age of the bridge, which was a 55-year-old bridge. And so that safety score turns out to be a 4.966. And we, again, we don't have a unit. Um, you can indefine, you can do units afterwards. Uh, there wasn't ever anything, it was just a score. Okay, all right, so uh, we pounded out that lesson so uh, we can uh, jump back to something else and, uh, or keep on moving to computer output and that should be the last section